It's February, just at the end of winter, so oh, it can feel like there's not much to do, but actually now there's a lot of little jobs you can do. Take your time and it'll make a big difference to get you ready for the spring. So it's still winter and it's actually not natural for seeds to germinate and start growing at this time unless we give them some help. And there are different ways you can do that. Like if you have some undercover space outside in your garden, say, and it's not too cold, this won't apply to all of you. If it's not snow on the ground, uh, it's probably worth waiting a bit. But in February, in milder conditions, you could sow outside, but you will need some extra warmth for the germination phase or the seeds just won't germinate. So if you say you had electricity in a greenhouse, you could buy one of those electric heat mats and have your trays sitting on that to help them germinate, help the seeds to germinate. And then what I'm doing is I don't, my greenhouse is off grid, so I don't have the possibility of electric heat mat in there. Well, I actually make a hotbed, but we haven't done it yet. And that in February, a good time to start with something like that would be around the 20th actually. Uh, there's really no rush at this time of year, uh, but to get seeds going, if you didn't have something like that in an outdoor space, you can do a surprising amount of early propagation in your house. For example, here, I have some trays that we sowed. This is part of a trial for comparing different compost. That's why I've done some very early sowings because we want to get a handle on which composts are going to work best. And these trays were sown five days ago and after sowing, we water them completely. So the trays are 100% moist. The compost is not soggy, but really moist. And then that means it'd be inconvenient to try and water in here and make a mess. So they've just been sitting here actually for five days with the plastic on top to keep the moisture in. And then that leads to the next phase when you see the seedling leaves appearing. But the key point here is that germination, think of that as a phase, different to growing on, needs more warmth. And that's why I'm using the warmth of the house at night. It's much warmer than even a greenhouse in the garden. Next stage. <laughs> this is using artificial light in the house where there's not enough actual daylight coming in windows. If you rely on that, you get tall, leggy, thin seedlings, long stems, and they fall over. They're not strong plants. So if you want to carry on with growth after the germination phase, which that phase does not need light, except for seeds like celery and celeriac, everything else can germinate in darkness. That's fine. But as soon as you see these little leaves of whatever it might be, they need some light. This is the kind of thing you can do in, in a house, grow lights. You can even do this in a cellar or something, uh, totally artificial light, but proper grow lights, which you can find on the internet. And these are radish, which were sown five days ago, multi-sown, and peas sown seven days ago, peas for shoots, in fact. Again, though, we're trialing compost. This is early February, uh, but from mid-February, I would say it's a really good time to sow these ones. What you can also sow from mid-February, no rush, <laughs> it's worth waiting. If, if you sow too early, then you get big plants that are ready to go out before it's very nice outside. and. Sowing from mid-February generally means you're going to be planting, transplanting from middle of March, which is about right, with some fleece cover over often. And as well as the radish and peas for shoots in particular, you could be sowing turnips, for example, really good multi-sow, onions, salad onions, there's quite a list. And what you sow into, well, these are the trays I designed that for this purpose. So they're really effective. There's enough compost in these quite small cells and you can get little clusters of seedlings that grow very happily together and go in the ground together with their mates. Works really well. You need, if you get four radish or four turnips or four beetroot plants in one of these different size trays, 15, 30, 60, according to how much you want to grow, those little seedlings can grow to a big enough size and go in the ground together. You need one quarter of the compost, one quarter of the space to actually do all this propagation. It's quite a factor. You can find links to where these trays are for sale in different parts of the world in the video description. And then you can do a bit of single sowing if you want, and that would be into like seed trays. That could be from mid-February cabbage, calabrese, kohlrabi, fennel, many possibilities. But what I'm not sowing yet is things like tomato, cucumber, the really warmth loving plants that will grow big quite quickly, wait until March. Potting compost. We actually need a different compost to fill these trays with because it's very small volumes and it needs to be high in nutrition, hold moisture really well. It's not always easy to find good compost. If you find a good one, you could stock up on it. Now it stores really well through the year. And examples we've got here is, well, actually you can make your own if you've got some old enough compost, which is dry enough also to sieve. This is some that we made, which has got a bit of worm compost in and even a bit of wood chip actually that holds some air in the mix. 
you can buy composts and in the UK at least I can recommend two in particular, Pete's Peat Free Compost and Moreland Gold I found over many years. Those are so reliable, it's really worth getting a good one. Might cost a bit more but it'll repay you. And I've recently given some to try, so there's one here with 10% um, worm, 90% composted wood. And there's one here, it's Adam produced this morning, he's keen on growing mushrooms and it's some mushroom substrate which he then composted for a year. It's basically woody material, composted for a year, eaten by worms and we're just trialling that. It's a great way to test your compost actually, to sow some seeds in it and see, see how it behaves. Now is a great time to buy seeds if you haven't already. I would look to buy them for the whole year ahead and then you've got seeds ready, ready for each month as it comes, maybe line them up in a row of data sowing, however you choose to organise it, it really helps to have seeds ready at the right moment. Uh, check out my seeds and varieties video which has a list of good ones I recommend. Uh, maybe check out my calendar as well, a sowing timeline on the website for, for the dates. Uh, buying seed, I still need to buy some, I need to buy some cucumbers and brussels sprouts and courgettes for example. And quite a bit in the line of that is seed potatoes. So. It's a bit of a misleading name, seed potatoes. You're not actually buying seed, but you're, you're buying potatoes. Now, there are potato fairs around the country you could go to and stock up on seed potatoes or use your own. You can keep your own seed potatoes. And I've been putting mine to chit in light, so this is a good time to do that as soon as possible, so before they develop long shoots in darkness. So they're just short, stubby shoots, that's called chits, in daylight. And why not have a go at this? This is seed saving of root vegetables where you need to grow probably at least 10, some people say more, but a clump, so you've got good genes for cross-pollination. And these are all examples of vegetables you could save, like onions, select out your larger ones, nicer ones, the shape that you like, keep the red onions and white onions separate, and then parsnips, I just brought these examples, like that's one I wouldn't plant to save seeds on. So, so root vegetables are biennial. That means that they grow in one year, and you, to save seed, you would transplant the best ones the following year, to keep the seed from and they want to grow now i mean it's uh first of february <laughs> but look at this the seed the temperature in here in the shed is 12 degrees centigrade 54 fahrenheit and as a result these beetroot are starting to grow they want to be in their eyes they want to be in the ground but we can still store these so take those off and, and these will store for a while yet late winter early spring no dig bed prep if you haven't spread compost already, it is not too late. If you, that's if you have bare soil, just pop some compost on top. And that's what we did here a couple of months ago before we've had quite a bit of frost actually since then. And so what you can do now, the frost has broken up any lumps. And if you just skim over the surface like this with a rake, which also tends to bring up these bits of woody stuff, which I flick into the pathway. And you can see how we're going from a surface that looks a bit sort of pale and not so interesting into something that's beautifully ready for sowing seeds. You could sow carrot seeds into something like this. You know, this is not too lumpy. It's all good. So you're just doing that little bit of bed prep and it's not raking the soil, it's just skimming through the surface compost. And one other thing I'm doing in this is picking up bits of plastic. There's always more plastic in, this is homemade compost here, than I can work out where it came from and it's also a good chance to knock out any weeds so if you see weed seeds germinating just give them a little rake if there's been any mild weather in winter you can get weeds like this these are two really common ones in winter the grass and you see how much root that's gone and it doesn't really work to hoe even to rake it so pull them out and dandelion actually just starting out growing already has quite a root so i do a bit of winter weeding doesn't take long but just keep an eye on your beds and keep them weed free and then you're more ready for spring it saves time come the spring now is a great time for getting new ground ready if you've got a patch of weeds grass whatever you could start with this method using either cardboard on the grass and weeds with compost on top of the cardboard the cardboard slows down the weed growth and it gets you clean soil if the weeds do grow through like perennial weeds you need to keep removing them in the first year do check out my videos on that the other option which can be easier if you've got really strong vigorous weeds is to spread some compost first like we've got here ready to do in this area we're actually progressing up this strip and three years ago 
oh no, two years ago, we did the first furthest patch from here where currently there's leeks and garlic and broad beans coming up. So that's in its third year. Last year we took in this bit of ground using the compost with black plastic on top. That's now rye for grain and mustard, which has been killed by frost, which is what I want. And this is the new ground for this year where we're going to spread seven or eight centimetres, three inches of new compost. And it can be anything. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, actually, this is really nice homemade compost. That's some green waste compost, we call it, which I bought. It's not the best. It's got big wet lumps, but fine for this purpose. It's carbon on the soil to feed the soil life. Black plastic on top. And then we'll leave that until late May, probably four months, even three or four months. The weeds are mostly dead. Then we plant squash through the plastic. And finally, something that often goes with a vegetable garden is maybe a few fruit trees. This is apple that we planted a couple of years ago and it's not been growing that fast. It's a bit too close to that big cherry tree taking moisture from it. At this time of year, I'm looking to prune it, maybe quite a bit actually, taking off some lower branches and any weaker ones. So actually taking out some branches altogether. These little ones here, cut them quite close to the stem. I must emphasize here, I'm no expert on fruit trees, but I can grow some reasonable <laughs> trees. So I'm giving you just some ideas. And don't be afraid to prune. Pruning is a way of taking out the weaker growth and getting a nice shape in a tree. Uh, this one definitely did need cutting back a bit that we hadn't done, and even the top. So there's your before and after. And this Orbing well will grow quite strong now. That's an apple on a medium-sized rootstock. This is an apple also on same rootstock M26. And it's a new tree, or newly planted. We popped it in a couple of weeks ago, made a hole, put the tree in, a bit of compost on top, then a cardboard and a bit of wood chip. Yeah, you can do variations of that, it's not precise. And what I'm looking to do here is take it down quite a lot, actually. Take all of that off the top. And then the, the branches will develop from there. I'm taking off these little tiddly ones as well at the bottom. Don't need them. Because well, at this point in the first year, you're just looking to have a nice strong stem, which stuff will grow out of. That's what, this is the starting point of a new tree. These, uh, you know, you could either do that and just leave them on the ground or you can put them on the compost heap if you prefer. I hope you've enjoyed having a look around jobs to do in February. It's a nice relaxed month coming up, nothing too urgent or pressing. It's not like in the summer where everything goes in a rush. We'll come back in March and I'll give you some ideas for the month ahead then.